The Locations page can be found via the Payroll Settings tab, which can be accessed here or here. This screen allows you to assign locations to employees, which can later be used to report the labour costs of each location. And it's worth pointing out here that a location doesn't have to be a geographical place. It could be a branch of your business. To add a new location, you'll need to enter the following information. Location name, which is a required field. The state, whether you want it to be a sub-location of another location, that is, sit under another location such as this. If you tick the sublocation box, you can then choose which location you want it to sit under. The general ledger export codes are generally used when there are a lot of locations and pay categories, and it's used to form implicit account codes. For example, let's say you have a pay category called ordinary hours with the GL mapping code of ordinary hours, and you have a location called Sydney with the GL mapping code of Sydney and a location called Brisbane with the GL mapping code of Brisbane. What would happen when producing the journals is that any ordinary hours earnings in the Sydney location would be allocated to an account called ordinary.sydney. Any ordinary hours earnings in the Brisbane location would be allocated to an account called ordinary.sydney. Brisbane. They aren't necessary to fill in and you can generally just set up your accounts in the chart of accounts settings page. And if these are not present, the account settings in the chart of accounts will be used. The next setting will define whether or not you want the location available to all employees. If this is ticked, the location will be enabled on all employee file locations pages. If it's not ticked, you'll need to go to each employee file location page and tick the location that you want to be available for them. This means, for example, that they will be able to clock on or off against that location or select it when entering a timesheet. If you tick the this location correlates with a record in another system box, you'll then be able to enter the external ID for the location. The system will check the external ID used and will validate for uniqueness in order to prevent multiple locations having the same external ID. You can select whether or not you want sublocations to report to this location. When this is enabled, reports will not split data into sublocations under this location. All report data will be rolled up and included in this location. The final option is whether or not you want default shift conditions that will automatically apply for any time worked at this location. For example, you could add a shift condition that indicates an employee is working in cold conditions. And this will apply by default each time this location is selected. The fact that there's a shift condition added is indicated by this tag here. You're then able to click save once these fields have been completed. You can delete locations. However, if you delete a location, previous data belonging to that location will still be in the system, but you will either not be able to report on it or it will be lumped into an unknown location field. An alternative to deleting a location is to rename your locations for example, to add deleted in brackets next to it, or old name in brackets. This way they are still in the system, but at the bottom of the list and are clearly labeled. If you're definite that you can delete a location without any negative impact, you can simply hover over it and click the red cross here. So that's all for the locations page.